The pandemic was a stress test for many of us, but here's one financial instrument that can help. OctaFX. OctaFX is a reliable global trading platform with over seven years of experience. It helps Forex traders make the most profitable and efficient trading decisions. Today, they have more than 3.5 million open trading accounts and 100 countries covered. If you're new to trading, OctaFX provides a free Forex basic course, free webinars, and also sends weekly and monthly reports so that you're always aware of market news. Download the OctaFX trading app from the description and get $5,000 in your demo account just for practice. You can practice until you feel ready to switch to a real account. Check the caption to find out more and use your promo code WUSI100 to double your first time deposits for more efficient trading. Hi, WUSI. I am Snow Vuyo. No Jogo. I'm all the way from Durban in South Africa, of course. And I just wanted to say thank you to you and the rest of your team. For the amazing amazing work that you guys do i mean personally for me i'm gonna be biblical and say that this podcast more in particularly the genesis has been god sent i mean because i found myself last year in a position where i questioned a lot of things in my industry and how they done in the education industry and i have been receiving a whole lot of backlash about it so this has in essence given me the push to keep questioning things and and see if it really does help in the long run in terms of evolution so yeah kudos to your team thank you thank you so 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 much we appreciate it the champ is here the champ is here (laughs) hello family after what's been a two-week intermission we tried a different format of the podcast you know who's back the one the only the walking superman no i'm joking that's just what my daughter calls me i'm so excited to be here i'm so excited to be back to be back in studio i'm pumped i've got to be honest with you the past two weeks have been really taxing i've had a million things on my table of to do and you know what happens with the to-do list is it just me or does the to-do list have more to do the more you do it's almost as if it's a never-ending like virtuous cycle of just stuff that keeps getting added on but i'm so excited to be back Two weeks ago, we had the interview with Michael Jordan, and if you've not heard it, I can't recommend it enough. I did that interview, I think, three years ago, and it's still poignant and powerful today. I watch it and still go, holy smokes, there's so much insights there. Last week, we did an interview with who was the patron of our firm and phenomenal mentor of mine who's since passed on, Dr. Richard Maponya. So what we're trying to do here is make sure that we blend the mesh not only of the concepts and ideas that I will share, the ideas and how you practice those ideas, but also bring you insights, wisdoms from sages who've walked the path. But now, back to our regular scheduled program. Today, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the Viblin effect, V-E-B-L-E-N, the Viblin effect. I want you to cast your minds back just over 2,000 years ago. A 23-year-old junior politician on his way to the top in the city called Rome was kidnapped in the Aegean Sea. And after he was kidnapped by Sicilian pirates, they demanded a ransom for this young man, a ransom of 20 talents of silver. I mean, that's about 60, 620 kilograms today. It's worth, I would imagine, about half a million uh, dollars or so. There or thereabout in kind of today's value. And so that's what they demanded for this 23-year-old young upstart from the city of Rome. This young man thought this idea was ridiculous. He was like, that's dumb. You only want 60 talents of silver for me? Do you know who I am? And so what he did is he convinced the ransomers, is it such a thing, the kidnappers who were looking for the ransom, he convinced them to ask for more money. He said, quite the contrary, send back the, the messengers you're sending to Rome. Tell them, in fact, that you want, you, he raised it by an additional 50 talents of silver. That was about 1,500 kilograms. And that added up to $1.5 million in today's money. This is strange. Typically, if you were kidnapped, you'd want to get away from the situation of kidnap as quickly as possible, and most importantly, as cheaply as possible. Why did this young man 
want his ransom raised. What did he know? That young man's name, by the way, you might have heard of him, was probably one of the most famous politicians ever to walk, this little rock of ours on the Milky Way called Earth. His name was Julius Caesar, or as we call him, Julius Caesar. So the pirates didn't quite know what to make of this. In any event, they sent back his men and told them to go tell the city of Rome. So these uh, messengers get back to the city of Rome and go, Listen, Julius Caesar has been kidnapped. At the time, he's a 23-year-old upstart. He's really just a nobody. He's been kidnapped, and the kidnappers want what is in today's money, $1.5 million. Word starts spreading around Rome. People go, Who is this kid? He must be really important for somebody to kidnap him and want that kind of money. And that, that's what Julius Caesar knew. He knew that value is a function of perception, not reality. See, if you are going to be kidnapped, you want to make sure that you're kidnapped for a lot of money. Because the idea is the more money you are kidnapped for, the more valuable you are. He didn't know it at the time, but Julius had just invented what we now know as the Veblen effect. Many years later, about 2,000 years later, it became known and named after Thorsten Veblen himself. So I'm talking to you a bit about the Veblen effect today. I think our lives every single day are governed in big part by the Veblen effect. Just think about what advertisers do. Think about what marketers do. Let me mention a couple of brands and tell me if they sound familiar. Rolls-Royce. Audemar Piguet, Protect Philippe, Musica Frere. There are some of you writing this down going, who the hell is Musica Frere? Zegna, how about my favorite, Aston Martin? And by the way, for my friends who are listening to this, it's not an Austin Martin, comrades. It's an Aston Martin. The founder was a fellow called Martin, Mr. Martin, and the very first car they drove up the Aston Mountains in the, the United Kingdom. Aston Martin. Did you know also that Aston Martin has all of their cars and model variants starting with V? The Aston Martin Vanquish? The Valkyrie? The Aston Martin Vantage? The only Aston Martin that doesn't start with a V is the Aston Martin DB. Yeah? DB1, DB3, 5, 9, and the latest model the DB11. You might have heard it from that Kanye West who says, give me line, give me room, room, room. DB9, like vroom, vroom, vroom. Yeah? So why is it called the DB? It's completely unrelated, but I'm a car guy, and that's all I'm trying to prove here. Because Aston Martin had gone bankrupt twice, and a new guy took over, and his name was David Brown. And he created a middle-segment sports car with a V12 engine known as the David Brown 1 the DB. We'd like to take a short break to tell you a bit more about OctaFX, a reliable global trading platform with over seven years experience. OctaFX has two applications that allow you to increase your income anywhere with just a computer or phone. One, OctaFX Trading App is an official Forex trading tool allowing for both depositing and withdrawing funds to control all your trades. And two, OctaFX Copy Trading. For those who don't have enough time to learn, but are willing to increase their income by trusting the professionals, here you can simply start following experienced traders and copy their trades. Also check out their new key feature, the Risk Score, which shows the level of risk the investor is taking to help decrease the chance of losing the investment. Cool, right? Check the caption to learn more. Also, in the description, you find bonuses for each application. Go back now to our conversation about the Veblen Effect. All of these brands convince you that they are premium brands by charging you premium money. You see, whether you're wearing a Swatch watch, with the greatest of respect to Swatch, or you're wearing a Patek Philippe, time doesn't change. Whether you're driving a VW Golf, say, or an Aston Martin DBS, the road surface doesn't change. What does change, perhaps, is your experience of it because of your perception of what you've spent buying that item for. The most important thing I think for you to think about is to start thinking about the value of the things in your life and whether the value of those things is a function of your perception or a function of their function. 
The mistake many people think is they think that their value is actually a function of function. It's not. Value is completely a function of perception. You see, before value exists in the real world in terms of what the actual product or service delivers, it exists first in the mind of the consumer in terms of how they see it, experience it, and what it is that they expect from it. And marketers and advertisers do this to us all the time. Why do you think they're constantly selling you that business class seat in their advertising when they're running airplane ads? And we haven't seen those in a while because we're in lockdown. But if you think back to the days when we were seeing airplane ads, they don't show people sitting in the cattle car class, as it's called, or the more, you know, nice term for it, economy. They show you people sitting in business class or first class. That's how they run their advertising. Why? Because the value of the brand is perception, not function. It doesn't really matter where on the plane you're sitting. The destination is the destination. So the first thing, start asking yourself, the things in your life that you're doing every day, the business that you're running, the career that you're building, is that based on the context or on the function? Have you shaped the perception or are you allowing the perception to shape you? The second thing you need to understand about the Veblen effect is it's quite contrarian, but listen to this. Scarcity drives demand. The less available you are, the more demand there is for you. There are some of you listening to this conversation who are altogether just way too available. You're on every trend line, every social media platform, having every conversation with every person. If you want to increase your value, you have to minimize your volume. I'm going to say that again. If you want to increase your value, you have to lower your volume. Now, lowering your volume doesn't mean you say less profound things. It simply means you speak less often so that the things you say, by definition, are more profound. If you think about it, motor mouths tend not to be considered very highly in terms of the consideration and the particular depth or deepness, as the young woke people would say, of their content. Why? Because you're speaking too much. You're saying too much. Third, for those of you building a career and building a business, I want you to just to go back and start looking at how you're communicating with your target market every single day. How are you communicating with your boss, your line function, your line managers? Not only how are you communicating, but also how frequently is that communication? And then I want you to start recognizing that if you lower the frequency of your communication, you could actually drive up the value of that communication. Because by the time that email lands, by the time you make that phone call, the person on the other end knows it's important. You don't call them every day. You don't send 50 emails every day. So the fact that you're doing it means, by definition, it must be important. So what's your favorite champagne? Is it Cristal? Huh? Is it Moot? And by the way, it's not Moet, it's Moot. Is it, which of the two is it? It could be any of the other global brands of champagnes out there. What's your favorite cognac? What about your favorite whiskey? What's your favorite holiday destination? Now, is it the uh, Maldives? Tahiti, maybe. Or maybe it's the Gold Barrier Reef in Down Under, Australia. Whatever it is, I can promise you now, it's your favorite destination, not because you've experienced it to be so, but because of the perception you have in your mind about it. See, even after we experience things, it's the perception first that lands and creates the runway for the experience itself. So I want you to think about the experience as the cargo plane that lands and think about the perception as the runway where that experience lands. And then ask yourself the question, are you constantly building a good runway? Are you building a good perception? Are you developing a good brand story? Are you leveraging the Veblen effect? Finally, many years ago, I was working as a speaker and still do of course. And I traveled to the United States. I'd just been signed by London Speaker Bureau. And I traveled to the United States. I was in New York City and I met with Caroline Hunt, who might be listening to this. 
And I was telling Caroline all about myself and what I'd done and all the things I'd achieved. And she'd looked at my resume and she was like, this is unbelievable. You've been in the industry for a really long time. You've done some amazing work. Then she said the following. She said, so why are you so cheap? I said, I beg your pardon? She said, you're charging $10,000 per hour for a keynote. Why are you so cheap? For context, 10,000 US dollars in my country, South Africa, is 150,000 rand. At the time, I was charging 100,000 rand in South Africa for a keynote. So my base point for the United States price was I took the South Africa price and I added 50% premium. Why? Because my context was wrong. See, when you're shaping perception, you have to consider the audience and the environment that you're shaping it for, not the audience and the environment that you're familiar with. Does that make sense? So the first thing she says to me, she says, we're increasing your price from $10,000 to $25,000. I'm sitting there going, <coughs> $10,000, $25,000. Yeah, if I can get 10 bookings, that's $250,000. Hey, that ends all of my problems. I'm sitting there getting really excited. She's telling me all about this. And her plan was very simple. Increase price. Increase your frequency in media. Lower the focal areas. You're going to talk about one thing, we'll see not five different things. We're going to remove you from talking about politics and all the rest of it. We're going to focus you purely on the thing that you're a subject matter expert on. Because, and listen to this, the fewer the things you talk about, the more authority you have in the thing you are talking about. Generalists are not considered experts for a reason. They're generalists. So it's about having deep knowledge, nuance, and insight on a particular subject area. And that's the thing your voice should resonate on. We've been working with that strategy now, myself, Caroline, and the rest of my agencies all over the world, for the past four years. And let me tell you, I haven't looked back since. Were it not for lockdown, I would have been on a global tour right now, charging much more than $25,000 a keynote. And what did I learn? I learned the Veblen effect, that value is a function of perception and then function itself rather than function first and then perception. So yeah, that's it, friends. That's our podcast for this week. Remember, we love hearing from you. We love your stories and testimonials. So please, hit me up, send me your notes, send me your thoughts, and let me know what it is about this week's podcast that's resonated. We've got a full program of things we'll continue to roll out for you. The Vusi store with the Vusi courses is now fully live, so you can go to the VT website, vusitemberguire.com, and there you will find the VT shop where you can sign up for one of my courses on sales training, personal leadership, leading others, and leading your business. Those are the four categories and areas we've developed content on. Don't forget that you can also contact our partners at Sound & Sounds if you want to record your own podcast. From me, Vusi Temberguire. Coming in hot and live from our studio in Joburg at Sound and Sounds. Sayonara. We hope that you've drawn valuable lessons from this week's podcast. To partner with us, visit mygrowthfund.co.za or email info at mygrowthfund.co.za.